This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today I'm going to show you how to set up a Valheim dedicated server with a custom seed using G Portal. Let's get to it. As a quick disclaimer, before we jump into the video, I just want to inform you that G Portal is paying me to make this video for you. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to setting this bad boy up. So, if you go to gportal.com, you will see something similar to this. If you use my referral link down in the description, you will actually get a 5% discount on your server. I highly recommend doing that. Not only does it help out me and the channel, it also gets you a 5% discount for the life of your Valheim server. So if you click that link, you're going to see this little thingy here at the top. And then you should see Valheim here, uh, or it could be down here. If for some reason you can't find it right when you go to gportal for whatever reason, you can click here and then just type it like so and uh, it'll show up right here at the top and then you can just pick that or it'll show up here or it'll show up here anyway you get the idea so once you've found it you just want to click on order that's going to bring up a screen that looks like this now at this point you have a few different options here but this part doesn't really matter too much because you can change the settings after this point so it just gives you kind of a starting point i guess so i would just click this one the 10 slots for 30 days it's fine i'm going to show you how to configure a bunch of other stuff after you click this so once you click it that's going to bring you to this set up here as you see the minimum slots for a valheim server is 10 uh, that's also the max slots this here is pointless because you can't have more than 10 people on a valheim server so just leave that at 10. now if you were renting some other server for them then yeah you may want to change this depending on what other server you're renting but this is about Valheim so we're going to focus on that so just leave this alone next you have the duration how long do you want to rent the server for do you want to give it a test run and just see what three days is like you can do that it's going to cost you four bucks but at that point you might as well just go ahead and go for 30. Uh, it's a pretty solid choice to go for but if you don't want to worry about renewing every 30 days and you want to get three months you can just do that and you get even more of a discount you can do 180 and you get even more of a discount or you can just rent the bad boy for a year and get a full 20 percent discount we're just going to go with 30. Then after that, you want to select a location. These are the locations that are, are available. I highly suggest if you're in the US, pick whichever one of these is closest to where you are. And for these other places, you just want to pick whichever one you're at. So for example, if we were in England, we would just pick that one. If we were in Australia, we would pick that one. So after you've done all of that, you're going to hit continue and that's going to take you to setting up your registration. If you you have not already signed in if you've already signed in it's probably going to skip that and go right to the payment method so you can register a bunch of different ways you can sign in with facebook google twitch xbox or just create one from scratch if you don't want to do any of that you can also just straight up log in with those things if you've logged in with them before so after you have finished making all of your selections and you get through the registration and the checkout and you've selected your preferred payment method you should be at your dashboard which should look something similar to this what you want to do is you want to click your tile for valheim and that's going to bring up a screen that looks like this so you can see right here at the top we have our ip for the server so this is what you are going to put in when you connect in game through directly through the ip you are also going to find some other very helpful information that we are going to use when we are setting up our custom seed and that is down here this is your ftp information then we're going to click on basic settings over here that's going to take us to the basic settings for setting up our server so first we have the server name you can just call this whatever you want then you have your server password. I highly advise setting one of this up because this isn't a game where you just want everybody and their mama to join your server. So I highly advise setting a password for your server. So we're just gonna put in something like this for now. So make sure you have that. And then you would just give that password to your friends. So when they sign in, they can just input the password and then join your server. Then you have your save game name. This is important because whatever you change this to, we're gonna use this later when we import a custom seed. So you can just leave this as world or you can change it to something custom, but just remember whatever you have it set to. Then you have the option to set whether or not you want it to show up in the servers list. 
guys. This doesn't really matter too much if you set a password. You don't have to worry about some rando joining. Uh, so that's up to you whether you want to allow that or not. Then we have the admin list. Uh, this is only really necessary if you plan on needing to like boot somebody or ban somebody from the server and using those type of commands. So it's up to you whether you really want to take the time to put that in there or not. If you do need to ban somebody, you have that option down here. You can also set it up to be whitelisted. So if you put something in here, then the server will act as a whitelisted server. If you don't put anything in there, it won't act as a whitelisted server. After you're done setting all of those settings, you just want to click the save button. That's going to save all of those settings. And then when you are ready to start your server, you just click up here, this little button where it says offline, you just click that and then your server will start up and we can go back here to the main status page here. And you can see that it now says that the server is online, says my Valheim server, gives us our IP, all of that stuff. So we just needed to start it up once in order to create the proper file structure so that we can see the world file and stuff that we are actually going to override with our custom world file here in a minute. So at this point, you can just turn your server back off. So we're just going to click that button again and that's going to shut our server down. You can see we got the little notification that it's stopping. So now what we need to do is boot up the game and create a new world. All right, so here we are in game. So what we're going to do is we're going to click start game. We're going to click start again and then we're going to create a new world. So in this box here where it's asking for the name of the new world, you want to use the same name that you used over in G portal where it said save game name, you want to input that there. So whatever you called that one, you want to put the same name here. It's just going to make things easier for you here in a minute. Otherwise, you're going to have to rename some files. So when I was setting up the server, I left mine at default. So we're going to use the default name world here. Now, here's where we're going to input our custom seed. So you can just put whatever you want. And then once you've done that, you're going to click done. That's going to create the world over here. Now, you need to log into this world just one time. So you're just going to click start and just log into it one time. OK, here we are. We just logged in. That's it. That's all we need to do. Now we can just log out. Now what you want to do is down here where it says show player log. Click that. That's going to open up a Windows window to where your world to save files are. And that window should look something like this and your file structure should look something similar to this. Now what you want to do is double click where it says worlds and then you're going to see all of the worlds that you've generated. And you can see I have a bunch of them here. What we're after is the one that we just set up, which is called world. And you can see there are two files. Technically, there should be four. There should also be a database old, but I'm not seeing that. Uh, it doesn't matter. We don't want the old files. We just want the world.database and the world.database. FWL. Of course, your, yours will be called something different if you name them something different. Now you're going to need some type of FTP program. Whatever FTP program you want to use, uh, just Google free FTP program. For this video, I'm just using FileZilla. I'm not recommending FileZilla. You use whichever one that you want to use. Uh, FileZilla is just the one that I use. Then you want this information down here where it says FTP. All this information is going to be handy for you. It's super easy to set this up in pretty much any FTP program. You just want to like, it'll say something like connect to site or set up a new site where it asks for the host name. You put that in where it asks for the port. You put that in where it asks for the user name, you put that in there where it asks for the password, you put this password in there and then you click connect. Once you get all of that information put into your FTP program and you click connect, you should see something like we see here, or it should be the exact same thing that you're seeing here in this window specifically. So what we're after is this folder right here where it says save. We're going to double click that. And then we have a folder that says worlds. We're going to double click that. As you see, we have our world DB file and we have our world FWL file. Now, all you have to do is bring up that other window that we had open up on our PC that took us to where our world files were saved on our PC and you want to select your world DB file and your world FML file you can just select the DB file and then hold down control and select the FWL I keep wanting to call it FML for some reason the FWL file and then all you need to do is just drag and drop those over into your FTP window here 
and it's going to probably have a little pop-up that's going to ask you if you want to override them. You just click OK to override the files that are already there, and then that's it. Then all you need to do is go back to your browser window and then start your server up. After you wait a few seconds, your server will start up and then you can connect in Valheim and you will be loaded into your world with your own custom seed. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover for this video. Hopefully you all found it helpful. Uh, if you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim content. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching